Let's talk more about this with Sam Hotri, who's director of the Drug Policy Project at the think tank, the Institute for Policy Studies. Sam, a very warm welcome to the programme. Uh, your thoughts, first of all, on Trump's announcement? It's more of the same. Uh, Trump tends to have visceral solutions, uh, gut-based solutions, to problems that have very often counterintuitive solutions. Uh, and what I mean by that is this is an illustration of a counterintuitive problem, right? If you find yourself stuck in one of these traps, um, the natural instinct is to pull. But the harder you pull, the stucker you get. It's counterintuitive to think that you might need to relax a little bit to extricate yourself from such a trap. Uh, and so by executing more people, He's in turn giving a price support to drug traffickers. It's actually helping the drug industry uh, in that it, he's ra raising the risk premium these traffickers are then allowed to charge the next person in the smuggling chain. Uh, the higher the potential sentence they may have to serve, the higher the penalty they may have to pay, then the higher the cost they can pass on to the next person in the smuggling chain. So when we're talking about things like heroin, cocaine, marijuana, it's important to recognize these are minimally processed agricultural commodities that, have, that, that cost pennies per dose to produce in the real world. It's our policies of drug prohibition combined with, with high demand and high risk that builds the value into this product. And so the death penalty actually acts, acts as a perverse price support for drug traffickers, if you will. Uh, so, so San Ho, if, if we're talking about these kind of, if I can use the word, theatrical solutions that feed into this, you know, drug war kind of narrative, does that mean perhaps that the discussion gets further away from what actually needs to happen? And what is that? Exactly. Uh, this is, it's not unusual for politicians to engage in drug war theater to show voters that they're actually doing something. Uh, but being tough is not the same as being effective. Uh, and what this does is that he's actually turning back the script back to the 1980s and, and early 90s, calling for these, uh, these, these antiquated penalties that were originally a, a Clinton-era initiative, by the way. Uh, and there already exists the death penalty for certain classes of drug crimes. If you commit murders in, in, the, in the act of committing a drug crime, for instance, that already exposes you to, to the death penalty. So this is really about motivating his base. Uh, he said it in New Hampshire, which is one of the whitest states states in the United States of America. He also, at the same speech, uh, vilified immigrants uh, and, and, and Latin Americans and connected it to domestic gangs. This, these are a lot of, you know, uh, thinly veiled code words that he's also using as part of his re-election campaign, in my opinion. Uh, and and it's partly about the midterm elections coming up. Uh, and San Ho, um, this aim to cut opioid prescriptions by a third within three years and talking about the move towards a national database, you know, monitoring opioid prescriptions. Do you think this could be potentially an effective measure? I think it's far, too little, much, much too late. The time to have done this, if this supply side policy was going to have any effect, would have been 15, 17 years ago when this problem was first beginning and people identified it as such. Uh, but to turn off the spigot now throws those people who are already dependent on these prescription opioids into the black market where they're forced to, to play Russian roulette with, with street heroin, uh, which is very often laced with fentanyl or even worse, uh, synthetic, uh, uh, synthetic opioids. Uh, and that doesn't help anybody. You're actually increasing the risks to users right now by doing these, these knee-jerk solutions at this late stage of the game. San Hotri, they're joining me um, from the Institute for Policy Studies from Washington, D.C. Sir, thank you.